What is up guys, I'm the Board Gameaholic, and today we're going to be unboxing Vast, The Mysterious Manor, and The Haunted Hallways. However, we're going to be unboxing a slightly different, if you've seen my other videos, I've done a top-down view. I'm just going to try to do this really quick and show you uh, from here. So, let's jump right into it. Give me that knife whip, and let's open it. So, if you are familiar with Vast at all, this is kind of like a number two. Uh, Vast the Crystal Caverns came out a couple years ago and that one is similar in that they are both asymmetric games um, just like Leader's other game uh, which was Root um, and they also have asymmetric gameplay and all that good stuff uh, so here you have the instruction booklet with a lot of Leader games games uh, is a really hefty amount of rules just because every single character um, and player is going to be playing a completely different play style, completely different um, wind conditions and all that. So obviously there's going to be a lot of different rules for each individual player, each individual faction, character, what have you, um, and all the different ways they interact with each other. If you've seen my Gen Con video, I was able to demo this the mysterious manner Four leader games at uh, Gen Con and they were super awesome team uh, let's just take a look at this board real quick and nice and shiny board with all the uh, different icons and stuff um, so I know a lot about this game already because I was demoing it and uh, I, I really loved it I just couldn't wait to get this home uh, unfortunately they didn't have copies at Gen Con they gave me root but um, I really wanted this game. So, <clears throat> as you can see right here, this is the board. Uh, completely different from the Crystal Caverns where you just have tiles and you can go stretch as far and wide as you want. But this here is actually a manor, a house, a mansion, what have you. And so they have specific spots that you can go to. Which is really cool actually is, I guess this is like the Crystal Caverns, but the skeletons can go on the outsides of the board. Uh, and that's where they spawn and that's where they can move. Um, a lot of people don't re recognize or realize that by the delineations here on the, uh, the shrubberies there. They act as individual spots that the skeletons can move. And I don't know if you can see that. But I'm just going to jump real uh, quickly through this. Or five things are the kind of uh, uh, quick sheets, I guess. Um, and you have like the rules of how each player goes. Um, so you have setup, you have different setups, different traits, different um, actions that you do, and what that all says on here. And then on the back you have like uh, the different interactions that the character or faction has with the other factions. Um, so that's a quick sheet. Then you have here is your, uh, your grit dial. Um, the grit dial is, is how you track your grit, which is your XP. So each time you do adventure type stuff with the paladin, you're going to be twisting this, and i got to set this up, but you'll see that right there, and then you'll be able to twist that and keep track there. What I like about this is that it tells you straight up um, everything that um, you can do to get grit, and you can also lose grit, and it says right here. It also tells you the certain thresholds to get an additional cube um, to do certain actions, uh, and then you also get uh, cards, or ability cards, I believe, um, at different thresholds as well and it's all written on there and so you see on this side here is where uh, if you reveal a tile you get two grit if you destroy a poltergeist you get three grit and so on and so forth so that is the dial that I have to still assemble uh, and then you have a bunch of chipboards a bunch of chipboards okay I'm still pulling out chipboards okay so we have like I don't know 15 chipboards right here you will see a lot of these ones. These are the, the player boards or player sheets that give you kind of like root. Um, so you have the one, two, three, four thing, um, just like root versus um, Crystal Caverns had it more like just a whole bunch of information on the board and you didn't really know. It was just kind of overwhelming at first. Uh, and so these here are the, the tiles, the room tiles. And so you'll notice here they have uh, different icons, obviously. But they have <clears throat> doorways, so you have to match a doorway to a doorway. If you're the adventurer, you're the paladin. 
Uh, if you're the manor, you don't have to match doorway to doorway, but each time you reveal a spot uh, that has a doorway or an open doorway, you put another tile out. Um, the blood tokens or the blood rooms are where you place blood and then the spider can uh, pick up the blood to do di additional actions and additional stuff like that. The paladin has a holy room. I forget what these are called, but they're basically like uh, tunnels underneath the manor. And so the goblins or the, the skeletons, I'm going to do that a lot. The skeletons can actually pop up and teleport from there. Um, here's a skeleton dial. So uh, the skeletons use stability. It's kind of like their mana. So the more stability they have, the more uh, abilities <laughs> they can do uh, on their turn. Uh, here's the spider dial, the terror dial. Uh, so each time the spider's terror goes up, the more things it can do. Uh, its defense is gonna go up just like the dragon. Its spirit is gonna go up just like the dragon. But here is your spider, spider board. Uh, this is one form that the spider can turn into and it can turn into spiderlings. There's three different forms, and here's another one, the sorcerer, uh, and then finally the giant spider. Uh, and so at the beginning of your turn, and what's awesome is, you know, you just go one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this one's four, but the first thing you do is choose your form. And so you can choose either of these forms to turn into. Uh, the giant spider has five health, so when it, the paladin does five damage to it, it dies, uh, and the paladin wins. Uh, but the spiderlings, are basically its health so uh, you have five spiderling minions here and so I'm gonna just show you this right, right quick so there's a deck of cards but what's cool about this is you actually get all of the miniatures versus having to buy an additional pack so let's show you that right there they're not like super high quality miniatures uh, so you have your skeletons you have your paladin the giant spider guy Warlock as well. And in addition, you also have a the haunting. So as the mysterious manor, you play this character and you're basically moving around on the uh, through the manor, manipulating the tiles so that you can move your your haunt. He's gonna be doing a little dance move through the manor, and you gotta move the tile so that you can move through in a certain path. Uh, you'll perform a ritual. And you'll be able to do a little dance move through the thing, through the uh, manor. Uh, and when you do that, you'll get cubes that you can place here on your board. So this is more of like a programming character. Uh, you'll be placing your cubes here in these slots here. And you'll be able to do these uh, different actions from top to bottom, left to right. Uh, and then you have seals. So each time you do your little rituals, you'll get seals. And you need 14 seals to win the game as the uh, as the manor itself. If we look at the paladin, you got the paladin, which is the coolest one. Uh, same thing, has cubes you store up here. Uh, and then during your turn, you're gonna be placing your cubes in these certain areas, taking certain actions. Then you, you have cards, which are your additional abilities, special abilities, but you also get light tokens, which I showed you here. And you could use your light tokens uh, for different effects. So your cards are going to say, uh, use a light token that you have to put a torch or a lantern on the board. So here's these light tokens. And I don't know if you can see that, but these light tokens then turn around and they're torches or lanterns. God, the warlock. And I have no idea what the warlock does, but I'm guessing it collects treasures and tries to do stuff. I'm just not cut that out. I'm not going to no comment. Because uh, I don't want to get anybody confused. <laughs> um, and also, if you don't want to use your miniatures, if you don't like the miniatures for whatever reason, you have your standees. So here's your paladin, the skeletons, a warlock. Uh, then you have your spider. So that's that. Uh, and here you have your cubes, just basic standard cubes. Um, wooden blocks. So you have these. You have lots of cubes to track your individual actions and abilities. Green spawn die for um, your skeletons. Green with green. The skeletons are really cool because they get these ability cards. They're basically items for skeletons. So each skeleton has a name. Uh, there's slashy, there's casty, stabby, shooty, which is the archer, screamy, etc., etc. And then you also have like specific 
cards for them. So this one here is like Slashy gets a shield and you can put this on Slashy, equip this to Slashy and Slashy gains one defense. Uh, and then these are the cards. So if I can get this open. So these cards here, the Paladin has cards that, uh, you know, when, um, if he's able to, okay, these are the ability cards, but treasure cards. So if he picks up a treasure, the manor actually draws two cards from the treasure deck, which is this one right here. So basically the, the manor will draw two cards, pick one and give to the paladin. The paladin can either choose to take it and equip it or use it or whatever, um, or discard the card, uh, gone forever for the rest of the game. Uh, but the paladin would get five grit and then, you know, five grit will lev level you up and you'll get ability cards. So ability cards are this, these here, you have like 10 of these for eight, nine. Uh, and then you have your starter ones, which are illuminate and vigor. I'm just looking at them and I'm not showing you, but here they are. So you start with these right in front of you. Um, and you're able to, it just says right here to spend light, to turn, uh, to place a lamp in a tile. So you're, you collect light tokens and then you can turn them into lamps. And then this one is strength. Uh, you can spend fury to increase your strength and you can spend fury to, uh, place a breach on a wall. So knock down a wall. So that's like that. Uh, but also you get to draw another card whenever you reach a certain threshold in, in your grit. Um, so this one here is disdain. Each time you hit a skeleton, you gain three grit, but no light. So just like the dragon, the spider also has these cards here, which um, include like fangs, eyes, and webs. So you have these three different types of cards that you shuffle through, which kind of tell you what you're going to be able to do on your turn. Um, so with webs, you can lay webs and that'll stop the paladin from you know, sprinting through the entire manor. You'll have uh, fet eyes, which allow you to flip over room tiles. <clears throat> so the room tiles actually, the manor will place these face down on the board and then the paladin and the spider will be able to flip them over, revealing whatever that room is. And then that's how the spider actually reveals rooms with the eyes card. Uh, the fangs card is how you attack the paladin or you can attack an enemy. So you can attack poltergeist, you can attack skeletons, you can attack all kinds of stuff with the spider. However, you don't actually do damage. You just gain blood. You gain blood. Even if you attack a skeleton, if I'm not correct, I think that was one of the questions we had. Why do you get blood if you attack a skeleton or are they not enemies? Anyway, you get blood and you use blood by, to level up. Um, and what I was saying about the terror. So you need like three blood or four blood or something like that to level up uh, at the start of your turn. Here are the seals. Um, these are actually rituals. So each card is a ritual and you only start with randomly three, three of them. Uh, and then basically you'll notice there's a pattern here. And so you have the hunter and he's going to be on a tile somewhere on the, on the board on the board and you <clears throat> have to manipulate the tiles, the rooms to be able to move and perform this ritual. Uh, so there's, this one's really difficult. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, six rooms have to be lined up, but you'll get three seals. So remember I said you need 14 seals to win the game. There's three right there, but it's difficult to do. Uh, here's an easier one that only takes four rooms to line up and you just uh, when you're able to perform this seal you do that that action you'll move in that direction right this one says to move up right and you can like orient this however you want however um, when you complete this you'll get one seal and also a portent so the portents are it basically upgrades your skills the symbol here at the bottom right or left if you're looking at like 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 a normal person, uh, it, it, that symbol is a certain symbol on your board, which equates to a particular action. But uh, yeah, so this is probably going to be a terrible explanation as well, but I'm going to try to open up the haunted hallways and give you an idea of what to expect. Um, 
keep in mind though that they all come with the miniatures, which is really nice. I think I said that already. But unlike uh, Crystal Caverns, you have to buy a completely different expansion mm -hmm. just for the miniatures. Here we open this one up and we have your rule book here. Quick rule book. Just really quick, uh, four pages. Oh, it feels thicker than it is. Uh, you have your cheat sheets, so you have an armored knight. Interesting. You have your shadow paladin. Uh, and if you are familiar with Crystal Caverns once again, you'll know that the knight is the hero in that one. So for the haunted hallways, you'll be able to uh, mix and match. So if you wanted to play the knight in the mysterious manner, you can do that. You can switch roles or bring other roles in from Crystal Caverns into the mysterious manner, including the skeletons and uh, goblins, including the, uh, the, uh, the dragon. You can put the dragon in the mysterious manner. Uh, okay, so let's open this up real quick. This is different. So hard to get these off. All right, and so here you have your uh, shadow paladin and your armored knight and what else do we have here looks like some miniature webs look at that that's really cool you get actual 3d printed pieces that's awesome uh, another thing i didn't mention which are right here are eggs so i have not seen any of this stuff but you also get your pillar of light as a miniature wow uh you get your shadow paladin uh, and I'll just show you real quick what you can get when you open it. So you have your poltergeist up here. You also get four new skeletons. Yeah, cool. So shiny, singy, sniffy, and smashy. Uh, here are some treasures. So it, it looks like treasure, but then you on the top, it's got teeth on it. I'm a little scared about that. Uh, what else do we have? We have walls. So these are miniatures or 3D printed pieces of actual walls. Wow. And, and it's got the cool little face of the haunted mysterious manor on there. All right, so we have a whole huge deck of cards here. This is a whole different set. So this is for the, this is all the night. I guess this is all the night cards. You have special cards for the shadow paladin, did I say? Yeah, so you have cards for him. So yeah, a whole huge deck of cards for those two characters. This just looks like two uh, different characters. So obviously you can't play with a paladin and a knight and an armored knight, right? You can only play with one yellow character or faction. Um, and then you can only play with one red faction, etc. cetera. Um, and there is nothing underneath the insert, but uh, I, I like the insert. Makes it everything nice and organized. Um, I'm a little weary of the box size, of course, with all of Leader Games. This box is really tight and compact. Let's hope everything fits back into the box. That's vast the mysterious manner. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I'm gonna enjoy this game. Uh, I have played it and it's fun. People are probably going to be asking what makes this different or better. Uh, they did, I mean, from year one to, to now, with, they learned a lot um, and so from this compared to Crystal Caverns I feel like it's more streamlined it's easier to understand um, I like it because it's adventure versus root is like more war wow <clears throat> more war oriented it just feels fun I don't know how to best explain that like once you get it down it's just it's so smooth each player kind of knows what they're going to do. Like the, the first thing that happens is the paladin will enter the room, the, the, the manor, and just go off and explore. Like it's very simple, um, kind of like a tutorial at the beginning. Like you're, you're kind of being, you only have like one or two things you can do. So you're like, okay, I'm going to move here and open this door, move here and open this room, uh, and then that's it. Uh, but as you grow and grow and grow, each character kind of grows um, all at the same speed if that makes sense uh, so at turn five you're all kind of like well balanced and stuff <laughs> and I don't know it just feels fun so Crystal Caverns kind of feels more um, I'm just gonna stop this right here <laughs>